how? We are here. Yeah. We are doing snack handling. This is my <laughs> my king go. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. 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 Jomo Kenyatta International Airport is an international airport serving Nairobi, the capital and largest city of Kenya. JKI is located in the Mbukasi suburb 18 kilometers southeast of Nairobi's central business district. Originally named Mbukasi Airport, the airport's name was changed in 1978 after Jomo Kenyatta, Kenya's first president and prime minister. Guys, enough about the airport. It was finally time for our very first excursion using an aircraft as a form of transportation. Adventures. Hello. Bye, Kenya. Bye, Bye Nairobi. Bye. -bye. Hey guys, this is our first trip to Malindi. Many more trips come in this A one-hour flight from Nairobi to Malindi. Hello, guys. My name is Robin HD video editor and uh, their photographer. This is actually our first trip uh, using the plane. The realization that we are traveling at speeds of up to 250 kilometers per hour suddenly struck me. To be completely honest, I had no idea what to anticipate and only asked for a safe travel. Because of the flawless takeoff and the absence of any air turbulence delays, our entire travel was quite pleasant. After an hour, the landing gear was in place and the incredible experience was almost coming to an end. back to a van, which is what we used to anyway, if the plane could just carry us directly to the location where we would spend a few days, we wouldn't think twice about choosing that option. Timbo Flats is one of the nicest places to live in a residential area. It is a paradise and a home. Timbo Court Apartments offers beachfront lodging with an outdoor pool a garden, a patio, and free internet in Malindi, about 200 meters from Malindi Beach. Day two. A day park with a lot of activities, swimming being one of them.
the Skodagama Pillar. It is a historical monument named after the Portuguese who built it named Vasco da Gama. It is one of the oldest European monuments in Africa, having been built in 1498. In an effort to establish a sea route to India, Vasco da Gama arrived in Kenya. He constructed the pillar in a key location to provide traders traveling to and from the east coast of Africa with a sea route. We moved on to the Portuguese chapel from the Vasco da Gama pillar in Old Town, Malindi. Near the Shela neighborhood on Mama Nino Road is the little-known Portuguese chapel, also known as Saint Francis Xavier Chapel. Before St. Francis Xavier's visit to Malindi in 1542, Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama constructed it in 1498 while passing through on his way to India. There is a legend that St. Francis Xavier traveled through the area in 1542 while accompanying two sailors who passed away and were interred there. The church's cemented floor is covered with eight wooden benches, two chairs, and an altar containing Catholic relics. It can hold 50 to 60 people standing and 40 people seated. For the evening chill out and relaxation, we visited Cocoa Beach where we had a photo shoot session and a chance to see the famous Buntwani Bridge. This is our third and last day in Malindi. We are now headed to Marafa, Hell's Kitchen. So lastly, Masika and Luana manage our team building activities and uh, Masika today, during the day, Atakwa are very active, engaging you in different activities.
Marofa Hell's Kitchen is a rough terrain with towering cliffs and jagged rocks similar to the United States Grand Canyon. Although slightly smaller, you may see a variety of colors inside the canyon, each of which has a special meaning based on an old legend. The color of the hills represents the blood of the family that was punished by God for its waste. The color of the milk that was wasted by the family is white, and the color of God's anger toward the family is yellow. The legend has it that long time ago, there lived a very wealthy family in the present-day Marafa village. He was the owner of a vast expanse of land and of many heads of cattle that bred and kept multiplying every other year. One of life's essentials, water, was very far away from the location. It would take days and a lot of work to get to these crucial goods. Because of this, the wealthy turned to using milk rather than water for all of their needs, including cleaning dishes and clothes. The actions of this family incensed God, who then let loose his wrath on them. The Marafa Hell's kitchen that we see today was created after a huge storm struck Marafa, causing a deep abyss that buried the household and made it so hot that it was entirely uninhabitable for man. The Marafa Sand Dunes offers a scenic view for landscape or portrait photography. ruins. And the title Malindi is a Swahili noun meaning full of wealthy. Malindi. Mali is Swahili in English called wealthy. Then Dini Kambishi, how rich the town was. Mali ndi, Mali mingi, a lot of wealth. Neleweka? When Vasco da Gama came in here, I found the local people having houses and these houses of Makuti. Mad houses, thatched with Makuti. Makuti, these are the palm trees. That's what we call them Makuti, they have been thatched. Yeah? These are common houses back then. These are common houses back then, of which we had other houses which are considered very royal, very very modern. And those houses were uh, of coral stone and muddy, just like these ones here. Whoever had such house was considered very rich. Such houses had toilet in them and sitting room, bedroom. Those days we didn't have, uh, we didn't have uh, taps for water. People could put water in clay pots. So Vasco da Gama was oriented on such houses, how they, they lay out of the house, Swahili house, and later it, the people realized that the Portuguese had no idea about the toilets. 
So the Portuguese learned about the toilet for the first time in Malindi, using of the toilets for the first time in Malindi. Not only using of the toilet, but the hygiene which goes hand in hand in the toilet too. Not only that eating habit, the local wash their hands before eating and after eating, sitting on a mat. That's why later the Portuguese were using tables, of which table in Portuguese is called the mesa. And the Portuguese, the local had to call the table mesa just like the Portuguese. Finally, the Portuguese learned how to take shower, bath daily. The local have been doing it every day, so they had to learn about it. As a result of that, the Portuguese were impressed with the culture, so that they ended up saying no, they didn't want to travel back home because of the soft life they found in here. When we talk of water recycle, it is started as early 13th, 14th century. People knew the act of filtering water back then. Are we together? Back those days, we didn't have bamburi, no rhino, no blue triangle cement. These people burnt the coral stone and crushed it together. All this whitish is original cement they used those days. Yeah? They joined the coral stone with muddy, as you can see here, with muddy. And then later, they burned the coral stone and came up with that uh, ash, that cement for plastering. The gray cement, this one is modern cement. Renovation has been done using modern cement. So wherever you see grace, that's get to know that that particular place has been renovated, have been refurbished, I mean. Yeah? Let's get to the get a great mosque and see what happened. Assalamu alaikum. We are inside the Gede Great Mosque and the Imam could talk to the believers. The front part, the men could sit at the front part, the women could sit at the back. This pillar could support the roof while those who are keeping candles. And this one is the mihrab. The mihrab, Imam could later come in here and say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. There was nothing like microphone or speaker, the sound could be echoed back. This was used an amplifier to magnify the sound. There's a saying in Swahili which says, Hakuskela muadhini, wala la mtekamaji mskitini. Them days didn't have taps. People used to put water in such systems. So the person fetch that water is not right to see you misusing that water. Mtuweza kutumia lita moja, lita mbili. Instead, unakuja pano na inginizia migu yako mzima mzima mule, ya tasikia gathabu kwa mba kwa nini wana nchafulia maja mbo na tumia nguvu na wakati. Kwa hivyo wanapogo mbeza na nae na mana kumuelewa muadhini. Muadhini amesema God is great, God is great. Prepare for safe, come for prayer. Hukuito kujo kuchezi ya maji. Ambayi na unaisha mtoto mtundu. Arrogance, pastor. Arrogant pastor that is. Tuko pamoja. The rest of you can take a photo there as we proceed. took over. Nature played a very big role in this month of the structures. All these structures didn't have. All these structures had roofs. Today none of these structures have a roof simply because nature image kuwa wakati waki. Today none of these structures have a roof with an exception of the bathtub. That one there. The only structures still have the roof. PP and Pupu toilets. When I talk of the toilets initially, when the toilets you come and look at my capture come and VP, that's what the Portuguese learned about the toilet from the, from the locals. Here are the example of the toilets for Pipi and Pupu, number one and number two. And this one here, that's the bath stuff. Okay. 